So we've spoken before about how um, there's a remarkable structural consistency to neocortex um, in terms of its inputs and outputs, where, you know, layer four is the input layer, layers two and three, you know, consistently um, sort of project um, outputs to other areas of neocortex, right, where they arrive then in layer four, while layers five and six, the deepest layers of neocortex tend to project down into subcortical structures like the thalamus or the basal ganglia. Now, um, however, while there's that remarkable consistency in terms of structure, remember there's also a lot of um, uh, cytoarchitectural sort of diversity amongst different regions of neocortex. Um, one example I think I've given previously is how primary visual cortex, for example, um, you know, has a very, very thick layer visual four. That's a very distinctive uh, sort of structural feature of the neuroanatomy of primary visual cortex. In fact, it led to the designation of that region as um, striate or, you know, the Latin for striped cortex. Um, and, and there's a, a, a well-known... Um, kind of neuroanatomist who actually applied a number of staining techniques and, and other uh, sorts of techniques to kind of examine, you know, the fine neuroanatomy um, of a lot of these regions of cortex. Corbinian Brodman actually is his name. Some of it was gross neuroanatomy. There were some pretty obvious changes, like that stripe you can see in primary visual cortex is, is pretty visible. Um, but Brodman, um, in 1909, he was a, a German neuroanatomist who... Um, actually uh, examined the, the neocortex in great detail, looking for these differences in cell architecture, you know, the, 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 the width, uh, uh, thickness of certain layers, for example. Um, and he identified uh, 52 distinct, you know, cytoarchitecturally distinct regions um, that are now known as Brodmann areas. So oftentimes you'll, you'll see there is a Brodmann um, area number associated with a distinct um, you know, region of neocortex that is, you know, again, distinct from its neighbors because of some differences in terms of the type of cell that are, is present or, um, you know, uh, the type of, um, uh, you know, uh, receptors or, or channels or, you know, other aspects of um, fine neuroanatomy that is expressed in that particular region of neocortex. So um, you can, uh, it's been found, of course, that a lot of these um, distinct sort of cytoarchitectural or structural differences are, of course, associated with functional differences. So primary visual cortex, you know, which looks so different than its neighbors, actually does something different. The columns there are, are you know, are responsive to di different sort of functional aspects of the visual world. Remember those bars of light oriented in particular directions. Another architectural, cytoarchitecturally distinct region, um, say uh, primary motor cortex, right, um, is unique in that it actually um, has these these very large cells called pyramidal neurons that have big pyramid-shaped cell bodies and very long axons, right, that extend down into the brainstem and spinal cord, you know, to send motor output uh, from, you know, the precentral gyrus. So um, th they're, they're, these cytoarchitectural differences definitely also have functional consequences. Uh, and, and even though there's a great consistency in terms of cortex, in terms of inputs and outputs, there are still pretty significant functional differences um, in different regions. Uh, a lot of it depends upon um, uh, external connectivity. What's, what is it linked to? Uh, what, what network is it a component of?